Hi guys, I'm back. Um, we're gonna do a knife skills video today. Um, I wanted to show you guys a few different knives that we have in the kitchen that you guys might see in your kitchens at home um, before I start teaching you how to cut things. So, and kind of explain things about the knife. So I have a couple different chef's knives here. So this is a chef's knife. Chef knife range anywhere from like there's six inch chef's knives. I think there's actually probably five inch chef's knives all the way up to 12 inch chef's knives. I think um, this is my comfort zone. You notice all of these are eight inch. Um, that's my comfort zone. And I feel like um, as students, that's a good uh, size for you guys. This one um, was actually donated this summer. This is a wood handled chef's knife. Um, I prefer the wood handle. I like the way it feels in my hand, um, but it's all up to you. This is, um, two different things going on here. So this is what's called the bolster of the knife. This has a partial bolster on it. You can see this little metal piece right here. This one has a full bolster. And when I show you guys how to hold your knives, um, it's gonna make more sense and why you have the bolster. Um, so I would actually choose this knife over this knife because of the size of the bolster. I don't know why, but not having that there and that thin piece of metal um, kind of freaks me out. Um, it's totally safe and it's not sharp or anything, but I like having the smooth piece of metal all the way through, like this piece right here. So, and then there's just kind of a cheapo um, chef's knife with a plastic handle. Um, this one has a partial bolster on it too. It's just part of the handle and it's plastic. Um, not the most comfortable um, for me, but some people like that and they like the feel, this has a chunkier handle than this one. Some people like the feel of the plastic handle. Um, so I'm gonna leave the one, I'm gonna ditch these two because this is the one I wanna cut with today. So there's a couple other knives that we have in the kitchen. Um, this is a boning knife and this one is a flexible one. You can see how it bends like this. So this is to cut things um, like fish, like to debone fish. Um, or to take off um, like fat on things. There's also a stiff one that ha um, the bone, the boning knife doesn't move like this. Um, and it's a little easier to like break down different meats like chicken, um, things that have bones and you need, you, it, you don't want it moving like this. Um, so that's what that's for. We only have one of these cause we rarely use them in the kitchen, sometimes for caterings or to pull things off, but um, that's really what that's for. And it's got this thin tip at the top so it gets right underneath and um, does more precise cutting. There's that. This is a slicer knife. Um, you can see how the blade's flat like this. It's very similar in length um, to the bread knife. So the bread knife has teeth on it. So like something for like a crusty bread or cake that you're getting through, it has the teeth so you can work it like a saw rather than um, this, you, you can work like a saw, but um, it's for things that are, you can easily move through. Um, or something like a tort that you want really nice, um, precise cuts, or a cake that you want really nice, precise cuts, and you want it long like this, um, so it goes through the whole thing. Um, so we use this when, actually, when cutting up cakes. Um, some people will use it also for cutting up sushi, uh, like fish for sushi because it's got a really thin blade and sometimes I will freeze this and then cut with that. Um, and again, the bread knife is made so you can use the teeth of it to get through things. Um, so you don't put pressure down on it, you use the knife. The knife does all the work. Um, so that's what that is for. We have two different kinds of paring knives. Paring knives are really good for like cutting strawberries. Um, cutting smaller things like olives in half or um, really small items that, um, I don't know, maybe avocado, things that um, you need a tiny knife for, but that's really it. I don't wanna see you guys using these to cut up carrots or onion. Um, you want a bigger knife and it's safer that way and I'll show you why. Um, a couple other things you want to be really careful of in the kitchen that are sharp and you don't want to throw into your sink water because you don't want to cut yourself. Um, a microplane or a zester. Um, I don't think you would hurt yourself, but just be really aware, especially this one is really dull. Um, be really aware of what's in your sink so you don't hurt yourself. 
um, I have scissors here. The reason why I pulled out the scissors is for, because I don't want you guys grabbing things from the sink um, that are sharp, because these could do some damage. They have a couple different sharp points on them. Um, I like these scissors too, because they come apart and they're easier to clean. So if you guys are in the market for um, scissors for your kitchen, you wanna find ones that come apart. They might be a little more expensive, um, but they're definitely worth it because then you can clean all the insides and get all anything out that um, could be germs or bacteria. So that's that. And these ones have bottle openers on them, which is kind of handy sometimes if you're opening things up in the kitchen. Um, pizza wheel, pizza cutter. Uh, these, these can be really sharp. Just imagine grabbing that in the sink. Um, these ones aren't terribly sharp, but they definitely could be sharp if you grab them the wrong way. So you want to be really aware and wash these. Always run your knives and sharp things through first. Set them on the side of the sink, scrub them down, and run them through your sink all the way before going on to other things, just so you don't cut yourself. Um, and then peelers. Today, I have two different kinds of peelers that I wanted to show you guys. This guy's my favorite. I call, we call it the Y peeler. Um, it's just easier to peel with for, for my hands. Um, it makes more sense to me. So you just peel, you hold something and peel down like this, which makes it a little bit easier. I don't know why, I just don't like that action. So it's all personal preference and what you like, but I just wanted to show you two different peelers and that you don't wanna to toss things in the sink um, like this either because that could cut you as well. So just be really careful with that. I'm gonna leave my potato on there for now. Um, the other knife that I have here, um, this is called a Santuco knife. This knife, um, it's a Japanese knife and it's meant to cut straight up and down. You can see on the chef's knife, it has a curved blade and that's meant to rock. The Santuco is meant to cut straight up and down. So if you see those videos of people cutting like that, which I'll make fun of here shortly. Um, that's what this knife was made for. You still can rock with it. And I really do love the Santuco, especially the size. We got these last year for the kitchen. I love them. And they have the rivets on them. So things stick a little bit less. So today when I'm gonna use it to cut up the potato and it makes it easier to cut because it you can pull things that are starchy like a potato off the knife without hurting yourself. Um, Cause it's got the rivets in it. So these, um, take a little bit different if you wanted to sharpen them, contaminate, but, but you always want to keep a clean space. Um, so dry it off as well. So I'm going to get into cutting things right away. So I'm going to peel the rest of this. I have a little compost bowl here just to make it easier for myself in um, for cleanup. Um, you notice that I have my cutting board already set up here underneath my cutting board. I have a piece um, of shelf liner. Um, we have those in the kitchen, but at home you could do uh, just a couple wet paper towels underneath. And you wanna do that so you have stability on your cutting board and it's not moving around like crazy. So, I have this underneath it but just like a wet towel um, or paper towels. So if I were to wet this, fold it in half and put it underneath. So the idea is just so that your cutting board isn't wobbling around like crazy, that it's stable. Okay, so first thing I wanna show you guys with this. So I just peeled my potato, but I wanna show you how to hold a knife. So I like this knife again because it has this long bolster, but no matter how you're doing it, so here's the short bolster, but you wanna pinch right up against the bolster. Um, so on this one, pinch right up against the bolster with your thumb and your fingertip like this and three fingers tucked behind. A lot of people like to hold their knife back here, but you lose a lot of control of the knife by doing that. So you wanna choke up on the knife, get up on that blade, um, thumb and index finger pinching the blade right up against that bolster and your three fingers tucked behind. This hand is gonna be your guide hand. We call it the claw. Um, so when you guys are cutting things, you're gonna hold your claw up against what you're cutting. So say my potato, my claw is gonna stabilize it, but if I cut like this, I'm just asking for it. So um, you wanna put your fingers into it and rock forward just a little bit. And then as um, your hand's coming towards something, so say I'm cutting like, I'll use my celery. I'm cutting like this, but using my claw, 
I'm gonna crawl backwards with my other hand. So you're using it up here, crawl backwards like this as I get closer, if that makes sense. So um, something like a potato is round, right? So it's gonna move all over the board. You want, so get your claw in there and you wanna cut off the end so you have a stable flat surface to work on. So flip it up like that. And then you can either discard this amount or we can save it for our soup, which I'm gonna save it for my soup. Um, so now I have a flat surface to work with. So when we talk about knife cuts, we're gonna do um, a medium dice for our potatoes. So you guys, so claw and stand next to or in front behind your potato, claw, and then you're gonna line your knife up. So this is, um, what is this called? Oh my gosh. The spine of the knife. Jeez, that took me a minute. So this is the spine of the knife. So when you're looking down at the spine of your knife, you don't want to see either side of your blade. Um, so I have my claw set up and my knife is resting right against my fingers. So you're going to cut straight down, but I measured half of an inch. So if you don't have a ruler or anything near you, one inch approximately is one knuckle. So I just measure about half of that. So go right up against it. Again, claw, measure half of an inch. If you can't see either side of the blade, cut straight down. Scoot over, half of an inch, cut straight down. So now I have all these pieces that are roughly about half of an inch. It's pretty good, not too bad. Um, potatoes have a lot of starch in them, but they're also really slippery because they have a lot of water in them. So you can stack too high, but no more than too high, because if you start stacking all these together, I mean, obviously you wouldn't do that, but that's a little bit dangerous. Um, so too high is fine, but that's as high as I want you guys to go. So now I'm going to do the same thing, claw, mark off half of an inch and cut straight down. And I'm pulling the knife out, so claw, mark off half of an inch, cut straight down. And then I'm going to grab the rest of it and pull back. Be careful when you're pulling back because you're pulling the knife towards yourself. And then claw and pull back. So now I have um, my half inch long strips here and I'm going to and you can pull them all together like this and kind of even them up with your knife like this. Use your claw, mark off half of an inch, mark off half of an inch, and my claw, careful doing that, but my claw is crawling backwards on this so as not to get too close to that knife, but still stabilizing the other vegetables or the other potatoes. So I'm gonna push them up to the top and then I'm gonna do these two. So mark off half of an inch, pull back, half of an inch, pull back, half of an inch. And you might notice, so you're resting your index finger against the spine and you can kind of see here on mine, it's getting a little bit red, but that's a good sign. That means that you're holding it correctly. So remember thumb and index finger, three fingers tucked behind and your index finger will kind of rub against there, but that's not bad, that's a good thing. So I have my claw, and I'm rocking my knife. So you're rocking your knife, pull back and push forward like this. Pull back and push forward. Pull back and push forward. So half of an inch, push forward. Half of an inch, push forward. All the way through. So now we have all these pieces that are roughly the same size because if it looks the same, then it's gonna cook the same. This one, so it's not exactly the same size, but I'm gonna practice my rocking motion, my rocking and crawling backwards motion. So pull back and push forward all the way through, okay? So now I have all these medium dice. What you guys are gonna do is take a picture of it and upload it to the knife skills page or the knife skills worksheet. And then you're gonna put it into a container. So this is your mise en place for your soup. So remember mise en place is everything you need to make the soup. And we'll talk about that a gajillion times. But you wanna grab these and put them into a container because you only want to work with 
one thing on your cutting board at a time. Um, otherwise, if you have, you know, your potatoes spread out here and your celery spread out here and your carrots spread out here, you're gonna have so much on the cut cutting board, you're gonna end up in a little space over here and that becomes dangerous. So anything that you're done cutting, get into a container and set it off to the side. So now I have my carrots for my soup. Um, so I'm gonna pull out my compost bowl again and I'm gonna peel my carrots. So carrots in soup, um, in this soup especially, are what's gonna give it sweetness because carrots have a lot of natural sugar in them. Um, so I'm gonna peel them. Honestly, guys, when I'm at home, all I do is wash my carrots. I don't even peel them. But um, to be safe, you can peel them um, and to make your knife cuts look better. But a lot of the vitamins and nutrients are in that peel, so that's why I save them. So now I have that put off to the side. And then for a carrot, I'm gonna cut off either end. So for the carrot, we're gonna do a small dice. So you never wanna cut something that's as long or longer than your knife. So this is pretty close, so I'm gonna cut it in half like that. And then again, carrots are wobbly, um, so I'm gonna cut off the side, just a little bit of the side, so I have a flat surface to work with. So now we're gonna do small dice. So small dice is a quarter of an inch, so half of what we did for the potato. And if it helps you, pull a piece of potato and use that for reference. So we want half of that guy. So also, it's a quarter of your knuckle. So I'm gonna line myself up. I have my claw, thumb and index finger, three fingers tucked behind, and carrots are a little harder to cut through. So you're gonna push down on that. So get your quarter of an inch and push down, quarter of an inch and push down, and use your knife. Um, try not to use, use the sharpness of your knife to push through that. So now I have these nice pieces. And with a carrot, I am not going to stack it because that's kind of dangerous. So I'm just gonna cut, this is about a half of an inch, so I'm gonna cut it in half. And it doesn't need to be totally perfect, um, but you want them to be the same size, especially carrots, because if you have some pieces of carrots that are this big in your soup and some that are, you know, this big, those ones aren't gonna cook and you're gonna have raw carrot in your soup, which I love raw carrot, but you want it to be able to be pureed or at least soft. So now that I have all those cut, I can kind of hold them together with my claw and I can come through with that rocking motion. You can see, you can practice using your rocking motion. You can see your fingers kind of gonna get a little red, like I said. So cut it in half, cut it in half, and then come through, rocking motion all the way through. And I'm gonna use this little piece that I cut off, because I love carrots. Okay, so I'm gonna do the other one. Remember, you wanna cut off the side so you have a flat surface. Mark off the quarter of an inch. And I'm kind of using my fingernails in there a little bit. Okay, so now finish up these carrots. So quarter of an inch all the way through. Use that rocking motion to pull forward and push back. So now they are all roughly the same size, which I'll show you guys in just a minute. So just like that. So roughly the same size, which is a good small size. You want it to be something like that in the soup. So I'm going to get these all into a container. Do the other one, so cut off the ends. And then remember we wanna cut it in half because we don't want it longer than the knife. And then Cut off the side so it's not rolling. Quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch straight down. Quarter of an inch straight down. Quarter of an inch straight down. And then push all this stuff out of the way. Remember, we just want to focus on what we're cutting. If you're cutting like this, and you're going to keep running into all your other stuff, so just get it out of the way. Quarter of an inch all the way through. Just like that. 
quarters of an inch all the way through. Okay, so next I'm gonna move on to the celery. Celery's pretty easy um, and it'll cook down pretty fast. Carrot's gonna be the thing. Carrot and potato are gonna be the thing that cook the longest in this soup. Um, so we want to start those first. Um, so I have, ooh, that was a good cut. Cheese. Okay, this last one. So sometimes I'll do this too if I'm, if, the carrot kind of bows like that. I'll hold it on either side. You just have to be careful not to clip yourself. And then come straight through, and cut like this. All right, so carrot done. And carrots kind of, some people don't like cutting carrots, so it's nice when it's over with. So get your carrots in there. Remember, you're gonna take a picture of those and upload them onto your knife skill sheet. And then you're also gonna cut a small dice with your celery. So this celery, I'm gonna put in my compost bin because it's a little too big. I'm gonna cut with um, my Santuco knife now, but I'm, I'm not done with my chef's knife, so I'm just gonna tuck it underneath my cutting board. When you're not using a knife, you wanna tuck it underneath a cutting board so you make sure that it doesn't fall on the floor or you don't hit yourself um, or nick yourself getting by it. So you wanna wash your celery before you cut it, which I already did. I like to hold the side like this, the sides just to stabilize it, take the tip of my knife and run it through there. Um, so that's about a half of an inch. So I'm gonna cut that guy in half and then see, I'm just using the tip of my knife to cut right through, pull it, but I'm pulling it towards myself, so be really careful. Tip of the knife, pull it through. And then we are going to have the claw here cut into small pieces. So I can use that rocking motion on the Santuco. Um, it doesn't glide as well as the chef's knife, but it will still do it. So I'm gonna do one more piece of celery, cut off either end. And you don't wanna waste it. You just wanna cut off kind of the um, rooty looking ends, things that you don't wanna eat. So cut it in half again, drag the knife through, and then cut it in half. Okay, so now I have four pieces. So another thing I wanted to show you guys, like this, it's all fun and games, but you end up with not even sizes when you do that. And every time your knife hits the board like that or a hard surface like that, it makes your knife dull. So we wanna keep that rocking motion. This seems fun, but it's really kind of just annoying. And then you end up with all these random pieces and different sizes. Um, and you want them to be the same size if you're cooking something, especially like a soup, that you want everything done relatively at the same time. So we're gonna put those in the container. So we're getting our mise en place ready. So the next thing I'm gonna cut up is the onion, which I guess I said the carrot was probably everyone's least favorite. Um, now I take that back and I say the onion. So for the onion, I'm gonna cut off, so there's two ends to the onion. There's the sprout end and the root end. The root end has all these little hairs on it. So we wanna cut off both of the, or we wanna cut off the sprout end, cut it off like that. You're gonna flip it around. You're just gonna trim off the hairs of the root. So just like that. I'm gonna clean off my board. Cause this stuff won't break down in the cooking process. And this in your mouth is kind of the same as this in your mouth. So you don't wanna feed this to your family or your guests. So now I'm gonna cut straight through that root. So I cut off the sprout end and the root end. Now I'm gonna cut right through that root and make two pieces. So I have two pieces here. I'm gonna peel off anything on the outside I don't wanna eat. So it's looking pretty good. 
but you get to this and this ends up being kind of rubbery so you can kind of see that there so I'm gonna peel that off too because the rubbery is kind of dangerous with your knife but we want to utilize as much as we can of the onion we don't want to throw it away so I'm gonna peel off all of that So an onion has a ton of water in it, um, so it's gonna cook relatively fast. So with that root end facing away from me, I'm gonna line my claw up. Onions are awesome because they have all these nice lines. So I'm gonna line my claw up against those lines, like right in the middle. My tip of the knife, so thumb and index finger, three fingers tucked behind. I'm gonna get my knife blade, the tip of my knife's not gonna go through that root and I'm gonna come straight down to the board. So I have it in an angle just like this, and I'm just gonna follow those lines all the way around. I'm gonna cut about a quarter of an inch all the way around, but not going through that root, because that root is what's gonna keep everything together. So now I've gone all the way around the onion. So doop, 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 doop. not going through that root. So now everything's still together. So that root kept it all together. So now I'm gonna do a small dice. Um, I'm gonna hold, so the root's facing that way. I'm gonna hold the claw and I'm gonna come straight down. Scoot over about a quarter of an inch, come straight down. This way you get all even pieces. So once it becomes a little bit uncomfortable, like this and you don't, and it's kind of wobbly, just knock that piece over and cut around it. You can end up with about that much core left. So one more time. So root end facing away from me, claw right in the middle, tip not going through the root, have it in an angle, come straight down, cut over about a quarter of an inch straight down all the way through. And it's okay if a little piece comes out like that. And I'm crawling backwards, starting to cry. Now, turn it around so the root's facing that way. Come back at it, quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, all the way through. And see my claw crawling backwards? Quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, all the way through. Then when it gets uncomfortable, knock it over. And cut around it. So you have about that much. So now I'm going to put my onion in here. I'm going to show you one more way to cut onions and it's the julienne cut. So when you guys get an onion at home um, for your knife skills thing, I'm going to have you knife skills worksheet. I'm going to have you cut an onion julienne um, and julienne half of it julienne for knife skills um, and julienne is long strips so now I'm gonna cut off again same way cut off that sprout end it's just about that much just like a little hat turn it around cut off the root end just the hairs and I'm gonna cut it in half so toss that in your compost anything on the outside that you wouldn't eat usually it's just one layer of onion but onions grow below ground, so sometimes you get down to the middle and it's, or get down to the end it's looking kind of manky, just keep pulling those off. Also, um, onions can be harvested six months before you even see them in a grocery store. So when you get home, or when you're picking them out, sometimes you can't tell if it's a good onion or a bad onion when you cut into it, the whole middle is rotten, and that's, um, I still do that. So try to feel them, make sure they're um, firm but peel off as much as you can um, on the outside stuff that you would eat so root end facing away from you claw tip not going through the root quarter of an inch quarter of an inch just like the small dice and I'm gonna do that all the way around crawling backwards so see I am doop, doop, all the way moving my knife all the way around the onion so now I'm gonna cut off right where I started cutting right there and then now you have all these nice long strips 
So that's a julienne and it's kind of fun. So I'm gonna peel this one, do the last one for you. Okay, so root end facing away, tip not going through the root, quarter of an inch down, quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch all the way through. Okay, and then cut off right where you started cutting and you have the julienne pieces. Whew, onion is getting to me. Okay, so the last thing, the last two things I'm gonna show you have some garlic and garlic will go into your soup and you're gonna use two cloves of garlic if you're doing the quart but if you have six people in your family you can triple that re recipe pretty easily so for garlic when you get this big that's my salt um, this clove or this head like this you're gonna put your hand on top of it and press down and it'll get all of these into pieces for you, into individual cloves. So I only need two for this recipe. So I'm gonna pull two out, and you can definitely add more garlic if you want to. Actually, I'm gonna do three, because I like garlic. So with garlic, you're gonna cut off this little root end. I'm gonna cut off that little root end. That won't break down in the cooking process, so that needs to go away. I'm gonna cut all these off. And then I'm gonna take the knife with the blade facing towards the cutting board. Don't do it like this. Blade facing towards the cutting board and I'm gonna give it a tap. Blade facing towards the cutting board, give it a tap. There goes my garlic. Blade facing towards the cutting board, tap. So that'll loosen up those outer skins and help you pull those off because those won't break down. So garlic can be a little bit sticky. I'm gonna pull all this, put it away. I'm gonna get my garlic out of here. So I'm only working on my garlic on the cutting board. And I'm gonna wipe off all this stuff into my hand. Don't wipe it onto your floor because you don't wanna have to sweep your floor later, right? And I don't want you guys making a huge mess of your kitchen. So my sanitizer, wipe off my cutting board a little bit. So with garlic, you wanna break it down a little bit. So I have my cloth, I'm gonna break it down a little bit, just like this. And then for mincing it, so now it's broken down, I'm gonna put my hand on top and I'm still gonna hold my knife the same way. So thumb and index finger, three fingers tucked behind. And then I'm just gonna go back and forth on it. So I like to hold my hand up at the top like this. Some people like to do this, and you're just gonna go back and forth on it. If you want, you can sprinkle a little bit of salt on the top. Salt acts as an abrasive and it'll start to break it down. And then go back and forth like this. Another thing I just thought of, a lot of people when cutting like to hold their finger up here like this. Be really careful not to do that. Um, that makes you lose control over the knife. Um, it, you have less control over the knife and it's really hard on your wrists. So you wanna pinch like this, so know this. I used to work in a restaurant where the chef would come by and flick people's fingers off. And if we were here, I would flick your fingers off. Okay, so mince, you want the garlic to be really small. Just like this. And then the last thing for our soup, um, lemon, and if you're using a microplane or a zester to get lemon zest, you're gonna get more flavor out of the zest than you will the juice. So if you're zesting, you wanna do like two swipes and then move it. Cause once you get down into the white part, the pith, that's not gonna give you lemon, that's just gonna give you bitter. So two swipes and then move it. And then we'll use, we can use that if we want to in our soup. Okay, thanks for joining.